It's here. That was the perfect finale. Do you want to book a gig? I'm the band manager. I'm Inspector Bob Gravy, and this is my partner, Inspector Roseanne Grape. Homicides. Oh. Homicides. Cool. We'd like to ask you some questions about an acquaintance of yours, Frederico Olsen. Did he kill someone? This is my friend Maxie. She knows Frederico as well. So what happened? Maybe we should sit down. The neighbour found his dog playing with a human foot. That's how we identified the remains. The guy was a loony. One of those guys you just want to punch in the face, you know. Punching someone in the face is one thing. Cutting them into pieces is another. Did he try and contact you recently? No. I filed a restraining order against him about two years ago. Things got kind of out of hand. Um, Frederico was very dedicated to me. Dedicated? The guy was obsessed. Francesca makes a habit of attracting weirdos. Maxie. They're not weirdos. They're just dedicated. Obsessed. I'm sorry, this is this is so terrible. Hey, we gotta go. Is there a plan up? Um sorry, we've gotta go now. I'm having some furniture delivered. Really? What kind of furniture? Um, a recliner. 
We may need to ask you some more questions, if that's okay. Sure. Thank you. See ya. Something about her, isn't there? I can see why they went crazy. I don't see it. I want to check out this restraining order. Okay, these chains are about to go. Are you guys ready? Uh, just grab it by the middle of it. Uh. 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 Ow! My, my head! I can pull it up! Okay. Okay, you two, go take care of that. I'll finish this. Uh. Go now. Uh. I have a delivery for Francesca Morton. Francesca? There's no Francesca here. Are you, are you sure it doesn't say Maxie? I and mean, that's my granddaughter. Must have got the wrong address. Yeah. This happens all the time. I should give this Francesca a call. Hey, there's, there's blood here. Yeah, that recliner almost chopped my mate's finger off. You sure you're okay? Yeah. yeah. Really? You're yeah. shaking on the ground. Yeah, but you can go. It must have been the heat. Now, go. <laughs> that guy is so annoying. Honestly, I don't know how you stand him. I just like him because he's not clingy. <laughs> you know he's gay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was his fault. I mean, he wanted to go. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, Maxie. Do you need help moving the recliner? TJ will help me. Okay. So the cops found pieces of them. It's pretty rad. Is that what you're upset? Of course it is. This is a horrible thing, TJ. Don't you think it's strange what happened? Not really. Me and Josh were in a cafe one time, caught the dude taking photos of us. Why would he take pictures of you? It's just a weirdo. Can you please stay home tomorrow? Oh, come on, baby, you know I can't do that. Marco's getting married tomorrow and me and Josh are gonna take him to town. We can take a shower together. I'm sorry.
Okay, bye. Don't wait up for me. Oh wait, Granddad. Granddad. Jack. Hmm? What's up? Oh. Just something that happened at the shop. It's probably nothing. Hey, I was thinking about the shop. What do you reckon? I think we should create a page on your website where people can put the dimensions of the furniture that they want. That's important, Granddad, because people buy antiques mostly to decorate their house. And houses are getting smaller, there's not enough space, so... You sure it was a debug? Yes. Yeah, and a strong one as well. I, I saw a young woman running through a forest. Some people were chasing her. She was in danger. Jack, you know what this means? That you have the gift like your father. somebody else here. What's that smell? Oh shit, the popcorn. Might have to close the store. Why? There's too many debts. The antique business isn't really doing so well, and I've been trying to get some jobs on the side, but it's not really cutting it. You should focus on your music, Maxie. You're really talented. Thanks for coming over, Maxie. Stop thinking about Federico, okay? What happened to him was not your fault. Come here.
As you know, the Dubuk is a powerful spirit that feeds on the living. First thing to remember is never touch it. If you have touched the Dubuk, you have established a connection and opened a door to allow the beast to enter your body and your mind. If you have touched the Dubuk, you may soon experience strange health problems, such as hives, coughing up blood, head to toe welts, crushing chest pains, paralyzing headaches. Don't even attempt to face it, the book, unless you are in perfect health, physically and especially mentally, for it is the weak-willed mind that will first succumb to the spirit's flirtations and manipulations. TJ? For? for understanding a girl's needs. Huh. Okay. You didn't make yourself anything though. I'll do it. Uh, Cereal? Yeah, sure. Hmm. What did you get up to last night? I just stayed at home with Maxie. I was really sad about Frederico, you know. I even had nightmares. Oh, okay. Are you okay? Yeah, just um, a little more drunk than I thought. <laughs> and you still had time to bake cookies for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure.
freak. Did you know Frederico was into voodoo? And that he even had a blog? Uh, he had a lot of phases, Inspector, I'm not sure. Have you been feeling okay health-wise? Yes. Why do you ask? Just asking, that's all. We saw that you had filed restraining orders against some of these men in the past. We also see in each restraining order you seem to provide a different address. The only constant thing in my life is my dancing and my friend Maxie. <laughs> Look, I know what you're thinking. I know this looks strange and it is very strange. See, ever since I can remember I've had this effect on men and sometimes women, but men especially just seem to get very attached to me. You mean they become obsessed with you? Yes, I already told you this. So have you had romantic relationships with these men? With some of them, but Frederico, no, we were, we were just friends. Of course, he, he wanted more. They always want more. Did any of these men ever show violent behaviour? I don't know, what do you mean by violent behaviour? Did they ever slap you or punch you? Yeah, I, I guess. You guess? You know how it goes in the bedroom sometimes, things get a little violent, but it's okay. Francesca, violence is never okay. Did you ever report any of those incidents? No, not, I don't mean that sort of violence. I mean the sort of violence that happens when there's sexual tension. Like I said, I've always had this effect on me and it's like they go crazy for me or something. Well, what about your, um, your current partner? TJ, no. He's somehow immune to me. Sexually, I mean, but it's, it's a good thing. He's gay. I just, don't want people to get hurt anymore, Inspector. They won! TJ, what is it? I can't talk now. What? TJ! <laughs>
Shalom, Abba. No, what do you want? I think I found a dibuk. Uh, you are not prepared. Abba. Or educated. Abba, listen to me. Deal with these matters. You're dealing with things that you don't understand. Abba, I'm your son. I have the gift. You don't have the gift. You don't even have the right. Oh, here we go again. We've talked about this already. I'm more than capable of doing what we need to do. People will get hurt if you try to intervene. Oh. Abba, I think the Dibbuk will try Let to do... Let do what it has to do. Let other people deal with it. Just, just Dad. get out of their way. So he's going to be okay? He keeps saying the recliner's possessed. I really don't know what's gotten into him. Maxie, there's someone behind you. Hi, Shanti. It's <laughs> my granddad's new girlfriend. So where's TJ staying? And his mum's. She just lives three houses down the street. The book must feed on the souls of its victims to get stronger. Those who have come across a book feeding speak of a lingering putrid smell of burnt flesh in the air. They found burn marks on walls and on ceilings, pointing to extremely powerful electrical currents, produced in the transition of an unwilling soul to a demonic book. Whatever you do, never interrupt the feeding process. As the soul you were trying to save has already been doomed. Close your eyes. Feel yourself going back. What do you see?
poison someone. That's why they were chasing her. But why did she kill herself? We need to find out where that recliner oh. is. Tomorrow morning, we'll call every delivery company in the city if we have to. Whoever has that recliner is in great danger. Why didn't you go to TJ's? I rang the doorbell and nobody answered. Please don't make me go up there, Maxie. We'll just take a look, okay? Well, it's not moving now. Can we go to your place? I don't want to stay here tonight.
Hey, Francesca. Oh, Ralph. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry, I have to go. Have you thought about what I asked? I, I told you, I can't marry you, Ralph. I've got a boyfriend. Um, Maxie told me about TJ. Horrible thing. He has weak bones. I have strong bones. It makes strong babies. Babies? I'm too young for babies, Ralph. I'm, I'm sorry. You gotta let me in, Francesca. Hello, Maxie. It's Inspector Gravy speaking. Can you come down to the police station, please? Francesca really needs your help. Francesca, when TJ was dying, he left a message. You know what I think? I think he left this message for you. Do you think he was trying to write Francesca? I think Frederica and TJ's deaths are related. This list you gave us. You think one of them did this? Perhaps. Who? You tell me. Who would you say, hypothetically of course, is capable of doing something like this? They found at Free Rico's place. We've got a match. Warren Lee. Criminal record. Yep. I think this could be a two man job. Finally, things are starting to make some sense. Francesca! Oh, 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 Francesca!
Francesca. Francesca. Did you deliver a reclining chair to a, an address in the CBD within the last few days? Well, they uh, delivered a chair to a girl named Francesca, but they wouldn't give me her address. What's the name of Maxie's friend? The girl who dances? Patricia. Isn't it Francesca? Oh, it's all too confusing. Who are you calling? Maxie! It's turned off. I'll leave a message. Hey, Maxie. Come home. We need to talk. Urgently. Maxie, this really isn't necessary. I want to go home. Trust me, you can't go home until this thing is solved. There's a killer out there. Could be looking for you. Hey. I'll bring you your laptop and your pajamas later. But for now, you can use mine. Thank you. And if you need anything, you can call me. I need to go meet my granddad. I'll be back soon. Maxie, do you mind just passing through mine and seeing if the recline is okay? What? Please. You're hurting me. I just need to know that the recline is okay. Are you okay? It's my sister's birthday. I should give her a call. Yeah, that's a great idea. So this is an authentic prop sword from Death Slayer 6. Um, you should go home to your wife, Gravy. She left me two weeks ago. Took the kids with her. This time it's for real. <sighs> gravy, the pressure cooker. You need to let some steam out. Do you want to come back to my place? Drink some wine? Or blow off some steam? What do you reckon? No. Thanks. I think I should stay here and do some work. Huh. Yeah. Must be a popular model. You know that friend you're always hanging out with, um, what's her name? Who, Francesca? No. I told you it wasn't Patricia. Uh, Who's Patricia? I don't have time to explain right now, Maxie, but your friend is in great danger. That recliner she bought is possessed. Maxie! I knew there was something wrong with that recliner. She hasn't been herself since she got it. Well, we need it. There's no time to lose. We've got to go get 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 it. Oh, oh. Stay with him, Ashanti. I'll go. Oh. No, no, no. It's too dangerous.
Who's there? Door was open. We just wanted to make sure you're okay. You okay? No! I'm worried about Maxie. She left like two hours ago and she's still not back. I think I'm hearing things. Things? What kind of things? I thought I heard someone say the name Valerie out of the train. How long have you been taking these? I've been taking those pills for years. You said before you were worried about Maxie. Yes, she left like two hours ago and she's still not back. Okay, okay, just settle down. We're going to go there now, make sure she's okay. You can even come with us if you want. Maxie! Maybe she left already. I left your car outside. These are Maxie's keys. You try calling her? Try again. Thanks here. Oh, God.
Francesca? This is Maxie's grandfather. We have to talk. What do you think happened to Maxie? I don't know, but she's strong. She's very strong. So, can you help me? I'll give it a try. Why am I seeing these dead people? Sometimes fragments of souls linger in this world. Then perhaps they're trying to tell you something or do something. In this voice I keep hearing, it says Valerie, but who is Valerie? Valerie. Valerie and Gerard, of course. Here it is, Valerie and Gerard Colette. They were a French couple who lived in Akaroa in the 1800s, and they practiced witchcraft. Gerard and Valerie were demonic soul eaters they used the highly toxic petals of Nerium oleander to poison their victims. They were found out and chased by a mob. Gerard was killed, burned alive, but Valerie committed suicide in front of a peasant woman named Marie St. Clair. That's, that's my great-grandmother Marie. Marie suffered from hallucinations. She claimed she had been possessed by Valerie's spirit. After she became the center of fights between the men in the village, who blindly fought for her love, on several occasions to the death, she joined a monastery and lived in isolation until she passed in 1876. Both Valerie and Gerard had the power to ignite obsessive devotion from whoever crossed their path. That's exactly what happens to me. <laughs> but that's because Valerie is living inside of you. You see, Dibbers can move from generation to generation, especially within the same family. She was fully awakened by the presence of Gerard. They simply want to be together again. Gerard's in the recliner. Mm. Yeah. Somehow a portal was opened and Gerard inhabited the recliner. It was Frederico. Mm -hmm. He was obsessed with the occult and the detective said he was into voodoo. But something's still not right here. You see, a Dibbuk always needs a human body to, to, to cling to. And if Valerie is clinging to you, then Gerard would be clinging to Frederico. But... Frederico was cut into little pieces. He's dead. Yeah, it's a mystery, all right. Okay, here's our plan. One, we build 
two divot boxes. Two, we put the divots into the boxes. Three, we burn the boxes. It's gonna be a long night. for help. Jack! It's an emergency. I need an ambulance. Why were you trying to leave the country, Warren? Look, I saw Federico on the news and I freaked out. Did you kill him? No, I didn't kill him. But you were at his house? Yes. What were you doing there? He asked me to cut his legs off. I don't know why. I just thought, the less I know, the better. But you're a veterinarian, Warren. You're not even a surgeon. Look, I left him alive, yeah? It's not like I left him bleeding out. I, I, I sutured him up, and I gave him some drugs. I figured the guy would go to hospital, eventually. <sighs> Look. I even got him to sign a contract, say if anything happened, I wouldn't be held responsible. You think this means anything? I don't know. Look, I know what I did was wrong, but if it wasn't him... It... Here's how it's going to work. You take us to where the body is and we'll get you a deal. I already told you I didn't kill him. And, and how do you even know he's dead? Have you even found a body? Well, here we are, Detective. Ralph Kilkelly's apartment. Couldn't believe it when I saw him on the news. Horrible thing. Yeah, he was an odd bloke. Not much for talking. Always paid his rent, though. Never late. Not to imagine such a thing could happen in New Zealand. 
Why do you think he wanted you to cut his legs off, Warren? Was there something wrong with his legs? The guy was into some, some weird stuff, man. I don't know. All he told me was that it was urgent, he didn't have much time, he was desperate to get the legs off. Oh, uh, yeah, he installed the CCTV cameras in our building. Looked at a store that specialised in that sort of thing. This is Francesca Morton's apartment. It's been recorded. He was one of those guys, you know? It, he wasn't all there, he was you, somewhere else. You better give us something soon, Warren. God, he was spying on her. What the hell is that? I'll be damned. Believe me. Try me. I think you want to be able to fit a inside a... What, Warren? A recliner. Jessica, are you all right in there? Francesca? 
Francesca. I'm coming in. No, thank you, Inspector. I'm okay. Where have you been? Uh, what happened to you? Frederico was inside the recliner. Are you okay? It's over. So you decided to keep it after all? I need to stop running, Inspector. I have to say, this is a very unusual tea. It's nice, but it has a very unusual flavour. Would you like some more, Inspector? Yes, please. What do you mean, incorrect? It was two days ago I was there. Well, the body I've got here has been decomposing for at least two weeks. You're absolutely sure? Yep, this body's been dead for weeks. It's not unusual for a de Buc, after he's done with the human, to use the human carcass to store souls. If the carcass becomes unusable, the souls will be transferred to the nearest object until the perfect host body can be found. You're looking ravishing tonight, Francesca. Thank you, Inspector. Please. Call me Gravy. Say, you didn't bring your pistol this evening, did you? I will never bring a gun to a date. Let it go, Gravy.
darling. <gasps> Look who he came to visit. Ambulance. We need an ambulance. And police. Emergency services. If you get fooled by the Dubuque's apparent passive behavior, then you've already lost. So choose your battles wisely, as the demon is a formidable adversary. And never, ever underestimate the seducing power of the beast. <laughs> 